So welcome everyone who's joining us from wherever you are. My name is Nancy Board, and I'm the co-founder and COO of Global Women for Wellbeing. And we are here today on our Wine and Tea Wednesday series with my co-host, Lynette Davis, who I'm thrilled to have back and in this co-host seat. And our guest today is Dion Johnson. But before we get to Dion, let me just um, tell you a little bit about Lynn and who we are and what we're gonna have happen today. Um, Lynn is our administrative guru for Global Women for Wellbeing, and she is the glue that holds this organization together. We would not be where we are without her. So Lynn, I'm so happy to have you back in the co-host seat. Um, so thank you for joining. And Dion, what a, what a pleasure to be able to interview you. Dion is in, part of our GW4W London team. She co-hosts often. In fact, many of you will have seen Dion and, and heard her story a little bit, but today we really wanted to dig a little deeper into Dion's journey. There's so many nuggets of helpful information I'm, I'm sure we're gonna pull from today and pull some threads apart learn a little bit more about you and how you can inspire and lead others in our organization and in our network. So welcome, Dion. Thank you for being oh, here today. It's welcome, Dion. a pleasure, such a pleasure. Thank you, Lynette and Nancy, for having me here today. And it's always a pleasure to speak with you. And usually we're on the same side of the camera, like, you know, it's the same side of the equation, but now I'm in the guest seat, woohoo. <laughs> And so for those of you that want to join, um, it's still morning where I live. So I've got my nice big cup of coffee. <laughs> so we like to just have a sip and uh, we'll jump right in asking Dion some questions about her life and what's happening. So Lynn, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Nancy. And again, welcome, Dion. And Thank welcome, you. everybody. So Dion, you started your career as a midwife and then you became an executive coach an author now, and you're an advisor to help women lead from an authentic place. So mm -hmm. given your background and your experiences, what was it that prompted you to write your book, Influential Women? Oh, so um, the long, the, there's a long story, the short story, <laughs> but let me tell you um, that right at the beginning, the thing that really prompted me was good business advice. So I had a few coaches at the time who would say to me, Dion, um, you really should write a book. It's good for business. So they would say, you know, if you, if you just, you don't have to be war and peace, you know, just get yourself, uh, you know, a few ideas about women, leadership, personal development, just anything, just get something together and it will help your career. And honestly, I agreed, how could hard could that be, you know? I really do know about leadership and I really do know about women. And I really do know about personal development. I thought initially I was gonna just sit down one day, sort of just bang it out and get something published. And um, <laughs> it didn't go that way. It didn't go that way at all. So I sat down to write the book and realized actually I've got something meaningful that I really want to say. And it's not as simple as a bish bash bosh. I want to think about this. I want to, I want to create a message that's going to really truly impact women and their leadership and their lives. And so that became the real driving force behind me sitting down and going through the process. And it was a really hard process up for me of writing the book. Ooh. Dion, and, and I've been, I've listened to Dion's book on Audible, and I've been on my walks, and I loved having your voice in my ears. Thanks. As I listened to you and heard you explain more of your story, and as I, and as I read your book, I thought, wow, she was a midwife, and I like that analogy you use about literally birthing, helping women birth creativity and life. Yeah. And then how you've used those same concepts through this process of birthing yeah. the book, uh, helping women birth creativity. Could you talk yeah. a little bit more about that? It's so important, I think, and rich. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they say hindsight's twenty twenty. Mm. So, you know, just looking back, I could, it's like I'm joining the dots. And what I've seen is that, that 
at my core, I'm a midwife. So at my core, like my place in the world, where I belong, where my happy place, the place where time stands still, where I flourish and do my best work is really alongside women who are, who are carrying something that the world needs. Mm. And so, you know, when I look back, I can see that when I was a midwife, I really got fed up of birth, like really got fed up of midwifery. I was changing, I was growing, I could feel the pull to more. And a lot of people will identify with that, you know, of just starting off in one place and feeling that pull to move to another place. I really felt it and thought that I was done with midwifery when I, when I stepped away. But actually in hindsight, I look back and I can see that it's just a different type of midwifery now that I am still standing alongside women who are going through challenging processes, but now they're not in the labor wards, they are in the corporate boardroom, you know, that they're now, they're not um, bringing forth a, a child, they're bringing forth real solutions for this time in industry and for, you know, for their organizations to thrive. They're bringing forth new ideas, they're bringing forth insights that are, going to that are speaking to some of our most prolific problems that are speaking to some of our, our our most problematic challenges in industry and so my role in the two places are very very similar you know being alongside women who are like often going through stretching or or challenge or resistance or you know conflict in many ways you know it, they're very alike actually yeah, you know, I, I think it's really important that you were talking about this stretching and this pulling and this movement, because I feel as also an author that the writing process itself is yeah. this pulling and stretching and movement. And you said that you thought you would sit down and just write your book. But in, yeah. in the end, it was like, no, I need to pull back and sit down and really pull some things out of me. Yeah, so like conceive I had to conceive the ideas I had to really expand in order to allow those ideas to develop within me first and then go through the process of bringing them out into the world honestly it was um it was it was it was very challenging and again in hindsight I have some ideas about why the book writing process was so challenging but you know I can see that um, at its best, the, the book writing process for me was one, very cathartic. So there was something of, you know, of listening to myself and allowing what was within me to show itself to me <laughs> before it showed itself to anybody else, which I, which was, was a very powerful thing. Because actually, the book is about fresh approaches to leading hard change and tackling inequality. And I didn't start out writing that book. I told you, like I, I didn't even know that was something that I wanted to write about. And so, you know, going through this process of having that present itself and vie for that central thematic position within the book was a real shock to me. And I responded by feeling, you know, that even unsafe, unsafe to write the book or like somehow I was in danger you know, sharing these ideas. And what I can see in retrospect is that, you know, there are times, there, there has been history when women who with an opinion that perhaps goes against the grain was unsafe and was in danger. And I really, I really found that that sense lived in me. I didn't know it was there, but the book writing process really brought that out. Oh, Dion, I mean, what you're tapping on so many things that are stirring up in me with this process of this, this whole conception metaphor and delivery model around midwifery fits with everything that you're saying. And I think so many women can relate to that. And that's definitely something that, that is specific to the female body. Yeah. You're also talking about fear and putting your voice out there in a way and, and, and I think that that can be a challenging concept for so many women who are saying, oh, wait a minute, if I say this, what are the consequences? If I yeah. step into this part of myself, if I really, really put how I really feel out there, yeah. tell, talk to us about that. What's that like? Because you're out there now. 
I can't tell you how, I like to say that mine is a privileged position. So I get to sit with, I think some of the most brilliant women in the world, women who are, who are high achieving women, women who are CEOs, directors, heads, um, women who, you know, have really done the work to, to ascend the ranks and to occupy these spaces. These are not um, wallflowers. These, these are women with, with, with conscientious passion to see things get better. And I can't tell you the number of times that I see these women who are going, to, they come to me because they're going through some kind of conflict at work. You know, maybe they, there's some challenge with the board or they're, you know, they're, personal life is spilling into their professional life or work-life balance issues or whatever it is the issue that they they call me to work through but often it gets back to when we pull the layers back I like to say we work woman to woman behind the mask when we start to unravel those layers I can't tell you the number of times that I've heard people say um, how deeply they care about the big issues inequality injustice um, isms, schisms, illness, indifference, they see it functioning in their realm and they want to be part of making things better. They, they care deeply about a world that's better to hand over to our children and for the world that we're growing old in, they care. And they even have ideas about, you know, what's wrong and what needs to be right. But I keep seeing us come up against these sort of invisible walls that stop us from expressing that and, and going against the grain and rocking boats and calling things out. It's like, it's like we don't feel safe enough to stay true to what's driving us for real. And so, and, and that's often not even a conscious thing. We don't consciously let it go. We just get involved in the way that things run and we get involved in the day-to-day -day processes. We get involved in the busyness of business. We, we, you know, we, we take on the culture. We're a cultural fit. We take on the way that things go. And I come across daily women who are doing the best they can to show up and function in this atmosphere and their ailing, their pain is often very much connected to the fact that they have stopped thinking as themselves, stopped speaking as themselves and taken on the culture and taken on the, the way of that place. And it's painful. It's painful to not be speaking in your own voice. It's, I say it's energetically expensive to be, to be showing up as who they expect us to be and what they call professional and how it, things are done around here. And there's a, and it, it's painful to, to become disconnected. I see women who are, are, are either distracted with the busyness or they are disconnected from their, from their authentic voice and an authentic drive for being in that role in the first place. <laughs> and um, I see women who are often feeling disempowered, too small to make a difference in this big place. And, and that's, those are real things that we're dealing with. There's a real, that's how we, that's how many of us are finding the experience of being women in high level leadership. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Deanna, as you express that, I, I what kept coming up in my head with was what's at risk? What's at risk if we show up in this authentic yeah. space? Yeah, it's a powerful question. Yeah. If we go back to um, my experience of writing the book, yeah. that I literally experienced physical um, stress and anxiety around showing up on the page and in hindsight what I've been able to look back and see is that link to some of the risk that ex that existed in generations before mine <laughs> so that, that, it, that it wasn't even my risk you know so I, I, I physically connected I connected at a spiritual level a soul level uh, to the risk of 
exposing myself like this. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I find that in my clients, it's a perceived risk that doesn't actually exist, but that it's part of our programming to be thinking about how, this unsafe world that we're finding ourselves because because the world has been unsafe for women for centuries so sometimes it's just this perceived thing but then there are these real risks so the power structures that we we work in within the the marketplace are masculine power structures um in origin and they're not really made for women. And here we are, the new kids on the block. We've acclimatized, you know, we, we, we kind of watched how things were done around here and we made ourselves available to, to acclimatize to it. Um, but there are things that are, that are, are oppressive it, it, within the system to womanity and to women that at the moment, well, it's, it's a very real thing, you know, um, not, you know, being required to not be yourself in order to, to, to make it. Well, women who have a drive to make it have really suffered with the requirements that that costs, you know, family life is suffering, you know, um, you know, being overlooked or under acknowledged or undervalued is a painful human condition Like we don't nobody likes that feeling, we want to feel significant and yet for women to feel significant in the boardroom and the C suite and in high level leadership, sometimes we're selling our soul for that for that level of recognition and we're paying in other ways you know so it is dangerous in many ways yeah you know and as I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying and I'm thinking about the type of woman that you work with how do women kind of move through these really painful emotions that are associated with this historical background that yeah. we walk into um knowing that all of that's present and still have this determination to say that I am worthy enough to be a leader and yeah. I'm going to work towards become a leader because leadership um, is needed and it, yeah. it, it is needed from somebody who looks like me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that it's, it's critical to start even be having those conversations so what I see on a daily basis is women who are feeling the pain of the situation but not having any context for it so even just being able to to question what this is about I speak to women daily who say that they've been experiencing this thing for a year or three years or six months and you know just feeling like it's just a normal part of being in this environment. So I think, first of all, we're calling women to understand that work isn't supposed to be making you sick. Work isn't supposed to be making you pain, feel pain. And if it is, that's, some, that's a, a trigger point. That needs to be, you need to be thinking about where you get support with that you know there's so many of us are suffering in silence and just thinking that this is just the way that things are around here well that i beg to differ i say that this should be it. pain if you're going home feeling heavy drained uh, you know depleted upset this isn't something that needs to go on longer than you know sometimes we have periods like this because of what's happening that's normal but it shouldn't be going on months and years like this is that's not okay and then that leads me on to the next thing about support you know i i'm on this mission it's part of why i wrote the book i'm on this mission to make asking for help and receiving support sexy mm. you know just going back to the middle just going back to the midwifery analysis you know 800 women a day die in childbirth right now around the world 800 women a day and this when you look at the stats and look at what's going on behind this it's largely a result of inadequate professional high level support for women that women, even in natural childbirth, don't have expertise, uh, expert support. 
nobody in this country and I know there in the USA nobody wants to go and have a baby by themselves somewhere because it isn't just the physical process Dion now right. what you're talking about is an internal a real sense of support yes. somebody's got my back yes. the stress levels can be reduced yes otherwise you're going into that situation with strangers who yeah. you have historically known don't really care about you exactly right and exactly. and 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 what and so again this midwifery metaphor that just keeps swirling in my head um i think what you're saying is so so important because you also talked about how women are suffering in silence yes and sometimes that goes on for way too long as you said and yes. so part of this is about really challenging those norms and those standards and and what we know to be true but really you know bashing up against that and saying no it doesn't need to be this way we're going to call this out and that's you're calling it out i'm calling it out because it's essential not yes. only because women are metaphorically dying off at their desks mm -hmm. but because when you have a woman who is a ceo or a director or a head in a role, in a pivotal role within an organization that has a pivotal impact on our society, it really matters what's going on in senior leadership. It really matters who's occupying those roles. And we really need them to be bringing their A game. We yeah. really need them to be challenged, be, to be the kind of leader that's well enough, whole enough, strong enough, standing sturdy enough to challenge the organization in love and to call things out and to suggest new ways and to bring forth new insight. Like this is what we need right now. And we're all scratching our heads saying, what do we do about um, diversity and inclusion? What do we do about, um, you know, the, the, um, the presenteeism and all kinds of issues going on with our employees and our staff? Well, what we do is we create a board of powerful, heart-centered, motivated to make a difference leaders who are thinking through these challenges and if you have people who are feeling pain or they have old wounds that are that are not um, healed or they their head scrambled or they're just mad in too much or they're burning out or they're breaking down like those conversations will never be solution focused or powerful enough to change the things that we really need to change right now mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. It's, uh, yeah, there's, it's about giving women um, the opportunity to get that kind of support, to heal those wounds, to push further, just like, again, back to childbirth, to push, to stretch, but to be able to do that with the kind of support. And I just have to say, I think that's what we at GW4W, I know it's what we strive to offer, I believe hearing from so many women, it is what we offer. And as we heard last week from Dr. Eleanor, it's about locking elbows and doing this march together to move forward. Because Dion, you're right. We, we are the leaders that we know we can be, but we can't show up if we're not healthy from the inside I, out. I mean, I, I got goosebumps when you were listening to what you were just saying, Nancy, and that picture you know, I've wept before. I've wept before at the at the perception of that picture with us linking arms. Mm. I just think that this is, you know, there's there's a saying that there's nothing quite as powerful as a woman with a made up mind. You know, I really <laughs> believe that if we decided that we were going to tear down racism in the marketplace mm -hmm. if we decided that we were going to end all all of these inequalities and all of its form if we decided on the picture of the world that we want to hand over to our children us as women i really believe that i've seen our power in the labor room i got to see humanity in her glory and she's fierce <laughs> she's powerful like that's She's not man, she's not weak. I hear women saying, grow some balls or man up. Like, what? Like, I've seen humanity and I'm telling you, we don't need balls. We are made of very sturdy stuff. We are, we're expansive. I, like, I tell my really? clients, I've seen, I've seen humanity and she is able to 
to garner support. She, well, she, in, she inhales support and she mm -hmm. turns it into fuel to bring forth new things. Yeah. I've seen it. I've, we are incredible. And in a way that's distinct. That I have nothing, mm -hmm. I love men. I'm not part of the man bashing crew. Mm -hmm. In the labor room, I saw men don their hats and say, respect. <laughs> yeah. I've seen men see, look at humanity and say, wow, what is that? What is that? And I think that I, I, even in the transition from my midwifery to my consulting, I've wanted to find a way to harness that power because I really think it's the thing that's missing. Mm. I really think that we have this masculine and Nancy I heard you have a conversation with Lynn Twist about mm -hmm. the bird of humanity who that's flying on the one wing you know the masculine wing mm -hmm. is flapping so furiously mm -hmm. that it's tired and it's going around in, the bird is going around in circles because we need this other wing called the feminine power the, the womanity I say womanity we need womanity to balance things out to help this thing fly straight to yeah. go to new heights I really believe that this isn't just nice stuff like this is essential if we're serious about tackling some of these hard things that we're struggling with then we women need to find their sovereignty sovereignty their power their fierceness their their strength and bring it to the conversation about how we shape policy how we run things how we shape culture how we make decisions you know this is necessary yeah yeah, this, it is necessary and, and I'm inspired even more. I can feel the energy in me as you talk, say, yes, we got to get on with it. We have no time to waste. Yeah. And all of us are part of that. And that's why we're all doing the work that we are doing yes. to make the world a better place. Yeah. The more of us that do that together, the more we can get beyond what holds us back, yeah. the better yeah. we're going to be. Um, and, and I want to ask a question because we're already starting to get before you go there. Let me just say yeah, that yeah. It's, what, it's exactly why I'm aligned with GW4W. Mm. So I think that, you know, there is this coming together of like minds that is really important too. that, that, you know, that we that we need to find each other yeah. and support each other through this work, because like you said, it's like essential work. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so what I'm thinking of, um, gosh, Dion, because we are getting to the to the end. I, Lynn, is it okay? I want to ask her one more question before yeah, we yeah. close. But I guess what I want to say, because I'm thinking of the journey that you've been on, and and for all of us, Lynn's an author as well, and I'm I'm guessing some of this is really resonating with you, Lynn. It is. But I'm thinking about I'm thinking about our uh, next gen young leaders, and I yeah. just like to one more question, maybe would be. You know, what would you say to your 18 year old self now, knowing what you know, and also to that younger generation, women that are coming in now that yeah. don't have to hold back? Yeah. You know, what, what would you say to them that's different? I would say curiosity is key. I would say that at the moment that there are so I hear a lot of people even younger people talking about you know fight, feeling stuck because they don't know their purpose like this is something that I'm hearing among this the younger generation like you know I don't know my purpose yet so I feel stuck well I say be curious about everything wherever you are ask questions look behind the bonnet look underneath look behind look see see how things are running i would say don't be so driven to go into leadership be led into leadership by your curiosity allow the questions that you have to, and the answers that you find as a result of asking those questions to shape what it is that you're passionate about being and doing in the world. So for example, if you um, start to understand, if you see something that um, piques your interest or something that irritates you about your, the way you work, or you have some kind of issue with your boss, or you know there's some kind of 
issue with the way that your organization is impacting your world and you're seeing it, I would like to say, take that as an invitation. Take that as an invitation to walk a bit, to advance, to look, to, to, to examine it, to scrutinize it. Because as you do, you ask the questions, you will begin to start to see where the gaps are, where the problems are that are shaped just for you. Like they, they, they are calling you to your leadership self. Too many of us in, the, in previous generations have gone into leadership to prove something about ourselves, And I'm really hungry about for a generation that will go into leadership because they've seen a problem with their name on it. They've seen, they've understood an issue that they have something to say about, or they've seen a, a, a challenge that, need, that they feel like leadership is their platform for being part of the solution. So we don't need any more leaders who are trying to show you know um demonstrate impress people and show that, that what they're made of and what they're worth we don't need more of that we need leaders who are caring about real issues so i say get curious get curious about everything ask questions ask why and dig around i love that yeah. i love that I think that's really helpful because, you know, I'm thinking back on a younger version of me who was like, yeah, I, I was one of those. I'm like, I don't yeah. know what to do. I don't know what my purpose is. And, yeah, I you feel know. that so much. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. you know what? Just becoming curious about things and following where that is, you collide with your destiny in, in that Absolutely. process. Absolutely. So, yeah, I love that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Well, I think we're at that time, Nancy. So, you know, as we do each week, we like to encourage you to check out our website, gw4w.org, to become a member, to join us in our elbow locking yes. and our creating and finding like minds to create this type of support that we need so that we don't suffer in silence, so that we can unmask and give birth to our purpose and to meaning and to leadership in the world yes and um as we always do we'll do our ending toast and uh we say great minds mind sip sip together, together. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much lynn and dion and thank you to everyone who has joined us today what a fabulous conversation and i look so forward to many more of these with elbows locked. It's been great. Thank you, ladies. Thank you.